The drawbacks of having a Plex server on your computer are the computer always has to be on for you to access the archive with a Plex client. Wouldn't it be nicer if your Plex server was a separate device like a NAS which you could store near the router for maximum speed and availability? Hi, this is Phil from Make Tech Easier and this is making a Plex server from a Raspberry Pi 4. Plex is a wonderful piece of kit, a media server software which allows you to stream your movies and TV shows directly to any Plex client. Plex clients can be a web-based client on a computer, or an app on a tablet or a phone, or an Android TV box, a Raspberry Pi Zero, or even an app on your TV. Either way, the server software is neat and flexible and fast, and it keeps your movie and TV collection well organized and accessible, even scraping cover images and descriptions of the films automatically as you save them to the folders on the drive. In this video, we test the feasibility of making and actually building a standalone Plex server from a Raspberry Pi 4 and a hard drive. Why the Pi 4? The Pi 4 is your best bet when you're building a Plex server. The reason for this is purely about speed. Firstly, it's a very fast little computer, almost up to the level of a low-end laptop. Secondly, it has fast USB ports for hooking up a hard drive for storing the films. In video streaming, it's all about data throughput. The USB 3 sockets on a Raspberry Pi 4 are more than fast enough to shoot the data from the disk into the server brain and out to the waiting clients. Although it's possible to use previous revisions of the Raspberry Pi for this build, the Pi 4's USB 3 ports really pay off. Previous Pi USB 2 sockets run at 30 to 35 megabits per second, whereas the new USB 3 run at 320 to 360 megabits per second. It's like a tenfold speed hike. With transfer rates like that, it's possible to run external drives from the USB at something approaching normal computer speeds. You can run external drives on a USB 2, but they drag a little and you don't want that while streaming video. Another thing in the Pi 4's favour is its gigabit Ethernet. Not only does the video fly off the drive, but it flies down the pipe by the router to your client, be that on a wired connection or Wi-Fi. The only bottleneck is the speed between the router and the client, and that doesn't matter quite so much. Creating the Pi Plex server. So, to build this server, you need a Raspberry Pi 4. In a case with a heatsink or fan or cooling element is preferred. Power supply USB C, official power supply preferred. An SD card. An Ethernet cable or Wi Fi. Firstly, we need to install Raspbian on the card. You can get this from raspberrypi.org, a link in the description. Download the image and burn it to the SD card with appropriate software like, for example, the excellent Balana Etcher. Also, link in the description. Install the SD card in the Pi and boot it up. Prepping the Pi. Once you get a command prompt, input the ID as Pi and the password as Raspberry to log you into the Pi. Now you need to prep the installation and to do that you need to make sure the Pi is fully up to date. Type the following, sudo apt-get update and sudo apt get upgrade. Say yes to everything. The Pi may reboot, so just pop in your ID and password again. Now you need to download the correct repository containing the Plex server for Raspberry Pi Linux. You do this by first installing the HTTPS download transport or APT with the following command. sudo apt get install apt transport HTTPS. Before we can download the Plex repo, we have to add the Plex GPG key or Plex sign dot key to the repo with the following command. You can either copy that from the screen or you can cut and paste it from the description. Now the key has been added, we can download the server software. Again, you can copy these uh, commands from the screen or you can cut and paste them from the description. Once that is done, you need to run the update command again to refresh the Pi. sudo apt-get update. When that's completed, we can finally install the server software onto the Pi. Installing the Plex server. Installation of the software itself is quite easy. Just type sudo app get install Plex media server. And if the repos are in place, uh, it should install easily and normally. Now you need to ensure that the IP address on the network remains static. You do this by first finding out what the IP address currently is, and then edit the command line text file to reflect that. First, you find your current IP address by typing hostname-l, which in my case returned an answer of 192.168.053. Your mileage may, of course, vary. It may be that your network uses 192.168.1, whatever in the addresses. It all depends on your router, but you can check that. 
So now I can open my command line text file and edit it. Open the nano editor and the file by typing sudo nano slash boot slash cmd line dot txt. Now add the line ip equals and then add your ip to the bottom of this file and save it with control x. Answer y at the prompt. Now type reboot and your Pi will now restart. It can now run headerless so you don't have to have a monitor plugged in. If your movie and TV files are in a USB stick and the USB ports are mounted, you should check that as well, then you should be good to go. Be warned if you have a light version of the OS, you may have to manually mount the USB drives, yeah, which I did in my case. This goes double if you're using an external USB hard drive. You will have to format it and mount it on the system. There's all kinds of drive types and operating systems and all the info you might need about that is right in our article about making a NAS with a Raspberry Pi. Link in the description down below. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. As always, thanks for watching. That's all for now. See you next time.